This is Beth Doran. Today I'd like to visit a little bit about selecting beef replacement heifers. There's a number of things that we need to look at. One of the things is visual observation. There's a number of ways that you can go at this from this standpoint. One of the things I'd encourage you to look at is the length of body, total length of body. So we have the length of body of the neck, of the shoulder, of the rib, of the loin, and then of her rump. You'd like to see a lot of lengths to that. You'd also like to look for a square and level rump. Go on down, we want to look for smooth, thick muscle in that heifer. We'd like to see a strong level top, and this heifer could maybe be just a little bit stronger, and maybe just a little more level. Then we'd also like to look for the depth of the fore rib and the depth of the rear rib. We'd like to look for a heifer that has some heavy structure, Go up to her shoulder, and I'd like to see a shoulder this smooth that blends into that neck, blends back smooth into her rib. She needs to be a heifer with a clean front. This heifer, if I make her ideal, has just a little more leather in her dewlap and down in her brisket. And of course, because she's a heifer, we want to see her where she's feminine. Going on and looking at this heifer and some other characteristics, we'd like to look for a heifer with adequate height. You'd like to see volume and capacity as evidenced by a deep metal on her. You'd like to see slope to the shoulder, and ideally on this slope here, this should be at a 45 degree angle. You'd also like to see some balance and style of that heifer. And by balance, I mean if you take approximately where this line is and you go forward, that should be equal in weight or look like it would balance with her rear and her hind quarter. You'd also like to see this heifer needs to have growth and performance but not be over conditioned. Looking at the heifer from behind, of course we're looking for some width to this heifer. When you look up over her top, those muscles should be round and she should have some curvature and some width to her top. If she becomes flat and level in that top, then that means that maybe this heifer's filling in with fat and not natural muscle. The widest part of the heifer ought to be in the center part of her quarter. As you go back and you look at this heifer from a three-quarter angle, you'd like to see what they call spring a rib. You'd like to see this heifer be built more like a barrel, like this heifer is in this picture. And then when you go to the front, you'd like to see width of the chest, both upper and down at the floor of the base of her chest. Foot structures, extremely important on heifers. Contrast these two examples, and we have a good big foot on the left side, can support a lot of weight and a lot of structure on this heifer. Contrast with the one we have over on the right side, and this is a foot that is too small. This will usually be characterized by a heifer that may, splay, may be uh, toe out and be splay footed as you look at her. Structural soundness also can be evaluated from the front. If you look at this picture of the correct heifer, you'd like to be able to draw a plumb line that's perpendicular to the ground from the point of her shoulder that intersects down through her knee and goes down and intersects her foot. And both hooves should be pointing straight forward. Contrast this with the one on the left, it's a splay-footed heifer, versus the one on the right, it's a pigeon-toed heifer. Neither one develop desirable conditions. You should look at the heifer from the side on her front. You would like to see a heifer, again, built with that perpendicular line from the top of her shoulder that goes down through her center of her leg and on down to the center of that hoof. That should be perpendicular to the ground. Contract that, contrast that to one that is buck knee, in which case you see most of that leg is running forward and this heifer will tend to be over in her knees versus one over here that's calf knee, this is the opposite problem, that's back in her knees. When you look at structural soundness from behind at the side, you'd like to be able to drop that plumb line from her pin bone down to her hoof and that ought to intersect that hind leg right in the center of it. Contrast the, to one who over here is post-legged. This heifer, if you take a look, and you'll notice that most of her leg is forward of that. And when you look, want to look at the angle to her hock, you can see that that's pretty straight. Compared to a more diagonal line, would be on the correct one. The sickle hock heifer has the opposite problem. She has too much, quote, too much set to her leg. When you look at structural soundness from behind, You'd like to be able to, again, use that reference point for the pin bone, be able to drop that plumb line down perpendicular so that it intersects that hock, intersects the foot. Contrast that one to its bow legged, where most of that leg is going to lie outside of that line, or cow hock, which is the opposite problem, where most of the, the hock and the leg is on the inside of that line. 
Movement-wise, you want to look for a long, full stride. The rear foot should land where the front foot was. The leg should move straight ahead. You don't want to see winging. You don't want to see paddling. And you don't want to see a heifer that puts her feet down and then kind of twists on her foot. You also would not like to see any head bobbing. There should be little head movement. It should be a long, smooth movement in that heifer. Otter development, very, very important for expecting these heifers to raise babies. As you look at the heifer and the udder on this heifer on the left, you'll see that she has a strong attachment with good balance, good length, and very little fat is evidenced by in, in the front of her udder. Contrast with the one on the right, we're looking at one that has also strong attachment here, just bare balance. You'll see that the front teeth is much longer than the uh, rear teeth. Her teats are a little bit longer than maybe what I would like to see, and we're starting to see maybe some evidence of a little more fat in that udder. Two other important traits that we're looking at. Look at the heifer on the left. You'd like to have heifers built with a good temperament, those that are quiet and docile and easy to work with. First, and you'd also like to look at a heifer that has, if you're looking at one that has a white face, that has pigmentation around the eyes. There's records that are important, genetic records. You want to want to know what the sire and the dam was, what were her grandsires and her granddams, and how long were they in the herd. EPDs, if they're available, and it's a registered heifer, and then any genetic tests that may have been provided. Maybe there's a horn, uh, maybe it's for coat color, maybe it's for carcass traits, genetic traits, or maybe other tests such as uh, a double muscling. You can also look for some health, important records over here in health, We'd like to look for general, what was their vaccination rec record for general diseases, such as IVR, BVD, PI3, and the others that are listed here. There's also some breeding diseases that you would like to see that she has been vaccinated for, the Vibrio, Lepto, and Brucellosis. Morbidity, you might want to check to see how uh, many times this heifer's been sick and what kind of sickness, if she has scours, pink eye, or respiratory disease. The other important measures as you look at this heifer, you're going to want to look at what was her performance. Birth date, extremely important. I don't know if I call it performance measurement, yet it's important to record that down. But you're going to want to look at some other measurements. What were her weights at birth, weaning, and yearly? You don't want to go on down. What was her frame score? And from some of those, you can calculate weight per day of age. I'd also like to look at body condition score, not only of that heifer you're selecting, but also of her dam. Did her dam produce her uh, with a big weaning weight, but at the expense of, of body condition score on the dam? And then look within the herd ratios. How does this heifer stack up to other heifers that were in her contemporary group? Going over to the reproduction, some important measurements is calving ease. Did this heifer come unassisted, or did she have to have some assistance? If she has, has she been uh, evaluated for reproductive track, track scoring? In other words, has she had uh, an evaluation that looks at uterine size, uterine tone, and follicular growth? And then pelvic area. Pelvic area is where they're going to measure both the height and the width of the pelvic to determine the area. If you use that divided by a factor of 2.1, you may be able to estimate calf size and predict what the uh, estimated calving difficulty would be on her. Birth date, as I say, is very important. Early born heifers are, are extremely important to selecting your herd because they reach their puberty earlier. They're going to conceive, calve, and rebreed earlier. This means they'll have heavier calves at weaning. Their calves also tend, if they go into a feedlot, to have better carcass grades. Their daughters are going to cycle, conceive, and calve earlier. And ultimately, you're going to see that female stay in the herd longer. So the question is, will you select her? Well, I would encourage you to consider all of the factors that we've discussed in today's presentation. And I want to encourage you to evaluate that heifer closely. And good luck in your selection.